at some point we have to have a show hopefully everybody can comfortably hear me I see I have a guest today that I am looking forward to talking to just in case you're wondering this is the second show on YouTube live for Narc Abuse TV Network which is our new home now YouTube uh, we have uh, we have put it off for an entire year and uh, we've got some serious threats from some of our followers and uh, we are now here so endure us and hopefully let me do this here hopefully you will endure us as we make adjustments along the way we are in a whole new studio an entire floor of stuff that I'm trying to get situated and unpacked and um, we are going to have fun today because the diva of the day is right around the corner. You're going to find out. You're going to see. And you're going to like this because she's absolutely gorgeous from inside out. So here we go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what I'm doing over here at all <laughs> because this is not Instagram. <laughs> Well, that's good to know. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, I, I, I say to myself, let me get myself situated here. I'm, everything is uh, is uh, moving around here comfortably for me if I find my spot. There we go. I find my spot. You, on the other hand, are a professional at doing this. Uh, no, look at you. I'm trying to find my angle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say I'm looking for my best side, but often that's when the camera's off. So, <laughs> you are exceptionally beautiful today. Look at you, those beautiful earrings. Yeah. My daughter's going to see those. She's going to say, Dad, I think I need to go buy some of those. Uh, <laughs> you're styling. styling, man. And I, I, I was thinking about what I was going to do because the last time we did a show together, um, I wore a tie. And I said, you know, I don't want her to, to think that we're going for prime rib today. So <laughs> I said, all right, I'm just teasing. Uh, <laughs> could you introduce yourself to those who will find us eventually, Narc Abuse TV here, <laughs> Uh, so that they can find you uh, on Instagram. Please introduce yourself, my friend. Thank you. My name is Flora. I'm the founder of Redo Love, and I am at redo love, redo love on Instagram. And my website is www.redo.love. Uh, and yeah, I am a dating and relationship coach. Um, uh, and here to chat with you about my my little my little thing coming up. Oh, I I don't know if it's that little. I've been doing my little bit of my <laughs> little bit of research, which I'm addicted to. Before I have anybody on, and I knew you pretty well, but I didn't really research the master class until I got all of these individuals who were telling me how much they think you're awesome with the master class. I just got to say a few things before we go on about the master class. For example. Someone said that you had the ability to open their eyes and uh, that you have the ability to help them feel safe uh, through the master class. But those are just a few. But they also highlighted the fact that not that you um, are too hard on them, but you make sure that they do the work. So I don't think I've ever seen you that side of you where you make sure you encourage people to do the work. So sometimes people take these classes and they don't want to do the work. <laughs> uh, you know how it is. You kind of get the information, you hear it, and then you kind of don't really do anything with it. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. I always re relate this stuff to going on a diet, right? We know what we're supposed to do, but then we don't actually do it. And why don't we actually do it? Because there is kind of some subconscious underlying thing that is holding us back from doing it. Okay. And so if you're really ready to make a change, it doesn't matter what diet you go on. There's a billion diets out there, right? It kind of doesn't matter. You are going to make the change. And so it's really about having people that are prepared and ready to do the work. If you don't do the work, if you don't keep up with the diet, if you do the diet for 10 days and then, you know, go back to eating donuts and pizza, which I love most, um, <laughs> then you're going to gain it back. Right. But, so you have to like be consistent and, uh, and do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are there, are there times in a relationship people 
improve their emotional and romantic diet and then go back to pizza and donuts unnecessarily when they were already making progress to have a healthy relationship and now they go back to a toxic one uh yeah um we you know we're as we're programmed from the time that we're born maybe even before the time that we're born um in certain ways and where our our responses our reactions and our daily kinds of choices are automatic almost Okay. And we don't realize that, right? We're not taught that. Nobody tell nobody tells us that. And people are learning that now, but it's still really like a new um, a new science, let's say, or a new way of thinking about how we function. And uh, your your subconscious is there to keep you safe, and it's there to keep you comfortable and do what's easiest, the easiest way to get there. So it's always going to do what feels automatic. And so, yeah, I mean, normally, you know, you'll be in a relationship, you recognize there are problems, uh, you have a fight, one partner is like, you have to change, the other partner is like, fine, I'll change, two weeks in, they're doing all the right things, and then, you know, three weeks, they three weeks in, they forget, they don't care anymore, they're back to their automatic responses. So if you're not constantly checking into those, then you're con you, it's very easy to fall out of them. You do eventually build new neural pathways if you keep doing the work right where it those new uh behaviors become automatic but it takes time and it takes effort especially in the beginning to 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 change are, are there situations in which um a person does go through that process maybe they go mm -hmm. 14 15 20 days a, a month and they're doing quite mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. And then the partner has to be like their caregiver and keep reminding them the adjustments that they need to make. Um, is that just a lack of emotional maturity on the other person's part? Um, well, first of all, it depends how the partner is reminding them, right? Because, <laughs> uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, because it can become kind of a defense mechanism, not right, not to change if somebody's nagging you, as you know, is typically the uh the way people talk about it. But um, the, I guess your question was, do people still falter back even when they're reminded constantly? Or is the, the other partner becoming a caregiver? Yeah. If, if the guy's falling back all the time and-, and Why is it the guy? Maybe like, it's the girl. Oh, don't believe me, I, I'm, an equal <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity immaturity person. So I, but what, now she becomes his babysitter and, and he now has to become like a father figure to her and constantly reminding her. There may well, be that's... chances for the person to maybe take some self-responsibility and accountability for their behavior. That's the dynamic that happens a lot in relationships, right? Because um, we recognize our partner maybe needs to change. They kind they want to change, but then they are always falling back into their subconscious coping mechanisms, into those automatic responses, right? And that that dynamic drives the other partner to become that kind of babysitter type. So it's the responsibility of both people in the relationship, right? Like. A, uh, I always say relationships are a hundred, a hundred, right? And it's a hundred percent response, responsibility and accountability on each partner's side. So it's up to the other partner not to become the babysitter. It's not their job to constantly remind them. It's not their job to change the other person. It's their job to support their growth at the rate that that person is willing to change okay. on their own at the rate that that person is willing to change on their own. For example, what we have just been talking about, those few moments we were discussing what we uh, were talking about there, is that kind of discussed in your master class? In, in it, in, indirectly, probably, right? What I do discuss in my master class a lot uh, is the how our subconscious is formed and how we kind of get these automatic responses and what um, what situations uh, have allowed us to become a certain way 
Um, you know, my masterclass, the name of it is called Relearn to Date Based on Your Attachment Style. So we talk about attachment styles a lot as a way for people to understand their subconscious and how the subconscious gets formed, because that's really like the basis of how we learn to uh, to attach to people in our lives. A lot of times, have you experienced or noticed that people are not attached properly uh, in not just in their relationships, but even when they interact with other people, that their attachment is is off? Um, are you seeing me clearly? Sorry, I was uh, getting like the for a moment. We, okay. we, it froze for a moment, but I got you because I can still hear okay. you. Okay. Um, all right, good. So do people form b bad attachments? Is that what you said? Yeah, bad attachments, improper attachments. Improper and you attachments, you okay. <clears throat> excuse me, you recognize those attachments are not, not, not proper. Uh, well, that, that happens quite often. There's, you know, there's secure attachment and then there's insecure attachment is like the verbiage around it, right? Um, and nothing is bad and nothing is good. There's probably probably being more secure is a little bit easier on the person experiencing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and most people kind of want to earn, it's called earn secure, right? When you move from an insecure attachment to a secure attachment style. But I really want to point out that nothing is improper, nothing is bad and nothing is wrong. It's just all coping mechanisms that we developed in order to receive love um, when our parents or caretakers kind of weren't able to meet those needs for us. Um, and so it's magical, really, if you think about it as little babies or, you know, even before the age of three years old, when we really our conscious minds were online, you know, we were already strategizing um, and figuring out ways that we could receive the care that we wanted and needed. And because this is kind of an, like this has kind of been brought out into the public in the last like only 10 years, really the link from the childhood attachment style to uh, the our adult love relationships. It's kind of like a new understanding that we took the same coping mechanisms that we had at three years old and we still have them today in our love relationships. Wow. And they're almost identical. They're slightly different, but almost identical. Wow. Okay. I don't remember what I was like at three years of age, but I, I'm sorry for everyone that has to deal with me as a three-year-old now. So, 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 okay, let's do this. People become a part of the master class, which is in the master class. The name of it again is what again, please? Relearn to date based on your attachment style. So what is it that they're relearning? Uh, they're relearning everything. <laughs> Like everything. How to be, how to be a three-year-old again? How to be a three-year-old again? How to not be a three-year-old oh, yeah. as a 35-year-old or as a 43-year-old or, yeah. you know, whatever age you are. Yeah. And, passed, you know, I you... passed all those ages a long time ago. So go ahead. I'm go ahead. I, man, you, you people are young. I'm way past all that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know, you were saying uh, you use the word immaturity. And what I find a lot that's very interesting is that People who have insecure attachment styles um, are dubbed immature a lot. And it, it's not really because they, I have people, you know, in relationships in their 60s and they're like, and he was so immature. You're not immature at 60. You just have still have these coping mechanisms that you never got rid of because you didn't even know that they were there. Okay. Well, thank you for telling that to a 60 year old. But anyhow, what I was going to say is, uh, so those coping mechanisms that are evident that were never gotten rid of, should they have gotten rid of them? Or are they maybe good coping mechanisms? How can we tell the difference? Uh, well, if you have a secure attachment style, they're probably okay. <laughs> they're okay. Sorry. Yeah. So the person is relearning, okay. they're relearning things that they maybe need to make adjustments in essentially, uh, yeah. so that they can have healthy relationships instead of going always back to, or finding or stumbling into, or whatever the case may be a toxic relationship. So right. is that, am I getting that 
correct me if I'm if I got that wrong. I mean, yeah, it's you know, really, we just uh, it, it is it does relate a lot to toxic relationships, but it isn't only toxic relationships. Okay. Um, it's just when you see negative when you see patterns in your relationships, um, and I, more than likely they'll be negative patterns, right? Because uh, why else would you be even noticing them if if everything was positive? Yeah, right. Um, uh, you, you, that is a clear sign that there is some subconscious issue that uh, is leading the way. And oftentimes that subconscious issue is related to your attachment style and is also um, really or related to, you know, some sort of childhood uh, need not being met and you try and figure out the how to meet it. The masterclass walks individuals toward that. The, the unmet need that they are now showing in their relationships that are that's causing a harm? It, it, it highlights and explains how it all kind of happens so you can kind of tease it out for yourself. Oh, okay. All right. So so the person does have to do the work then. They have to be honest with themselves, I'm, I'm assuming, transparent with themselves more than trying to, to put on a show for someone else. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of, personal accountability um, in this work overall. Uh, and the masterclass is kind of opens the door to understanding it because ultimately, I mean, it goes much deeper and this isn't even, you know, this kind of goes beyond the masterclass, but I'm more into like my work and my coaching, but, you know, we are a hundred percent from the day, I mean, you know, from early days, really responsible for every single thing that's happened in our life, you know, and when you're a person that lives in victim mentality, why is this always happening to me? Why, you know, that kind of thinking, that kind of mm -hmm. mindset, right. um, this is a really great way to open the door and understand how things aren't happening to you, they're happening for you and in fact you are actually at the helm of it all so um i thought to myself when we were going to do this and you know of course we we talked our pre-show prep like normal mm -hmm. you we have our already uh seen each other's pages and know of each other's work and i said to myself how can i talk about the master class and leave it at that when i love listening to you talk about attachment style and still keep it under five hours <laughs> so, 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 so I said, I'm going to be really good, but you're going down that road that I love to delve down. And I really want to discuss for a moment. When you say that we are at the helm, many people may not understand what you mean by that. I am proud enough to say that I, I did a show with you a couple mm -hmm. of episodes, so I have a pretty good understanding. But will you expand on that, expound on that a little bit more? For those who may find that hard to swallow, let alone hard to understand or get get their uh, get their thoughts around. Okay, I want to first clarify that I'm not talking about you know children that are growing up in abused homes, and I'm not talking about any kind of uh, like serious uh, issues. Trauma, trauma based right? issues. Or, or, well, right. yeah, big trauma based As, issues. Big trauma, just, yeah, and that especially where you know children are kind of. Um, in that situation, but as adults, even if you are a child of abuse, um, as adults, we have uh, we have the conscious mind that doesn't want to be in those situations, um, and 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 oftentimes we end up in very similar situations. And a lot of times, you, it's hard to see the link, and it's hard to see how everything relates back. But if you kind, you know, again, going through my program and, you know, starting with the relearn to date um, masterclass, you start to see how everything in your life is a result of your subconscious decisions. Um, now, we know, you know, it's very kind of known fact that uh, we only use 10 percent of our brain. Now, what does that mean? That means that only 10 percent of our brain is conscious. The other 90% is the unconscious, subconscious right. uh, parts of our brain and our, our nervous system, really, that are guiding everything that we do. And so 
uh, it, it guides everything that we do and it, it kind of guides everything that we draw to us as well, right? Because yeah. we're making decisions to be in certain situations, even though, again, we may not, we don't, nobody wants to be in an unhealthy, toxic relationship, right? right. I didn't want to be, I, I, the whole time I, I didn't want to be, but I was drawn to this situation over and over and over again. Um, and we, we find ourselves in these patterns a lot and, but we're also putting ourselves there. And so once you start to understand your subconscious, you start to understand how that happens. But if you don't have any concept of that, which I didn't, you know, before I started this work, then you're just sitting there like, why, why is this always happening? Why am I always in a situation like this? You're, you're then saying, for example, I'm going to piggyback what you just highlighted. You found yourself in that situation. You weren't looking to have that as the winning prize to have a toxic relationship before you die as the winning <laughs> prize of life. That wasn't what you were all about, my friend. But you found yourself in that situation. Are you highlighting then that you were at the helm to move toward a situation like that because of something that, well, coping mechanisms at the age of three? I, I was definitely there because, well, I would say it's twofold, right? I was there one because uh, I didn't have better coping mechanisms than I had when I was three. And so uh, I did what I knew and what I knew how to do was be in a toxic situation. Okay. Now, I would never go back to my childhood and say <laughs> my childhood was toxic. <clears throat> Excuse me. But mm. again, in, in the class, you learn how and why uh, you end up having that type of coping mechanism okay. that draws you um, to that toxic relationship. Uh, and then uh, also these these situations, again, as you grow in this work, mm -hmm. you realize that these situations are there as opportunities for you to grow. Okay. Do you get to repeat the same mm -hmm. behavior, the same situation over and over again? Do you keep choosing the same problem over and over again, or are you ready to to grow out of that? And that's why these uh, that's part of why these these things come to you, or why you bring them to you, really. And, and the master class puts a person in a position to grow out of it. The master class gives uh, people all the information they need to start understanding how it all happens, mm -hmm. and then my program. Uh, gives them the tools to move out of it <coughs> right Excuse right I, I have to, i have to ask you this bear with me because i will be i will begin the torture and because <laughs> i just want to say because over and over. all right here you go. <coughs> your 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 expertise is to help people essentially jump start their relationship in their to ha jump start their life to have a healthy relationship that I'm just taking you, telling you my take mm -hmm. on it, uh, mm -hmm. based upon what I've what I've read about you and some of the postings that you have. But what is the healing process that most people have to go through in order to, to have the healing process take place? A lot of people can stay in the angry process where they're angry because of what happened. But the healing process, can you describe what that's like for a person to go through the healing process? Mm, um, <laughs> I knew I did. I, knew uh, I, I got there's, you. There's, there's, yeah. I mean, because yes. <laughs> it's part of me wants to say like it's long, it's arduous, it's not easy, it takes time, it is you know, a uh, heart wrenching, heartbreaking, but it is also the the most rewarding thing that you can ever oh. do for yourself wow. um it is it, like it, it's the end of uh doubting yourself it's the end of chaos in your life it's the end of not trusting your own gut um it it kills you know not that it kills but it, it gets rid of the all those parts of you that are are in lack um, okay. and are scared. It's beautiful. That's beautiful the way yeah. you just described that. By the way, that was the one 
one leftover question from our two hour episode. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, that, was back, that was back in June. That was back in June when we did the show together. And I have been saving that one question. Oh. Well, I said, yeah. Glad I got it. Give her a heads up. And I went like, no, I'm not give her a heads up. I'm just going to ask her. All right. Now, out of that, I'm done. OK, so goodbye. No, just kidding. So, the healing process many people wanted. The other processes that they may go through with their emotions and other aspects of life. Um, but the healing process they wanted and sometimes when they're in it, have you noticed that maybe sometimes people want to get off the ride in the healing process because it is painful maybe, and they just want to, they want a quick ending to it and maybe uh, they need a little bit more time. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Most of the people that I've worked with in all honesty, um, come when they're already open and ready and they're so sick of whatever is going on in their lives that they are ready to, you know, kind of Step do into it. it. Yeah. 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 And you know, the, the, the thing that I think is important to say is everybody has their own healing journey and their own healing process. And um, I think that's kind of the beauty of understanding this. And uh, I, I don't know, I hope the way that I share it with people, because uh, it's there's never a wrong or right. You're never doing anything wrong. Um, you are on your own journey and you may face the same lessons over again because uh, you need to, uh, but that is part of your journey. And as long as you're on a journey to growth with awareness and in open minds and curiosity, then uh, it's, you know, it's okay to make mistakes, if you will, you know, but are they really mistakes? You know, was, they're just they see, you. if you're at the helm, then are they really mistakes? How do you right. do that? I was going to ask that question. <laughs> now you're producing and directing the show. Uh, so when it comes to what a healthy relationship is and what a toxic relationship is, my dear friend, please, Let's pick one. Let's see. Let's start with the toxic one. What are two or three things to highlight to someone to let them know they are in a toxic relationship? What would you say with your experience? Um, I would say that they their needs aren't being met. Okay. Um, right. They feel small or uh, undeserving or unworthy. Mm -hmm. um, and most definitely, I would say 98%, there's a really uh, bad, there's really bad communication. Um, whether that means that people don't, you know, the couple's not talking at all, or whether it means that they're fighting all the time, um, or one person isn't voicing, you know, voicing their needs, there's more than likely major communication issues, yeah. If you had to then now say on the other end of the spectrum, a healthy relationship, two or three things to keep in mind there, no doubt the opposite of each one you just said. Yeah. Go right ahead. <laughs> it's your expertise. Go ahead. Um, I would say, you know, where both parties are willing to take accountability and responsibility for themselves um, yeah. and uh, are supportive of the other, you know, the the other partner's um, needs and uh, what, what was I just going to say uh, that, you know, they're so that they're supportive of each other and willing to listen, willing to be open wow. without defensiveness. Wow. Right. I think that's really hard for most people. Um, you know, we're, we're always ready to kind of jump into that, but I, 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 uh, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the stuttering justification of whoever <laughs> I, we are. I, I, yeah, you yeah. do that. Yeah, exactly. You did, you did uh, that pretty, you did that pretty well. That was pretty good. But you have, those, you uh, have no experience I, I've been that. there. <laughs> yeah, I was, see, I was giving you a pass. <laughs> no. all, right, all right. So here we go. I got to do this with you, my friend. And, uh, I, I I'm not going to keep you all day. Uh, this is only the second show on uh, Narc Abuse uh, TV Network uh, here on YouTube Live. And, Thank you uh, for having me here. Well, I was, I was <laughs> after you to be the second person. I just didn't know whether you were going to say yes. <laughs> I, I guess I do have a, a list and a schedule of who I want in a certain order. And I wanted you to be second. I had Susan E. Winter. And of course, you know. Who oh, I love her. Yeah. I had Susan to be the first <laughs> one. And I wanted you to be the second. And uh, you said yes. And I was going like, man, if you say no, I don't know what I'm going to do. because. <laughs> How can I say no when I get so many compliments? I could just sit here all day. You know really. <laughs> you, you, 
Hey, I think the world of you, and you know I do, I think the world of you, you're just naturally down to earth. You're a very discerning and insightful woman. You have a great deal and a depth of understanding that, that at some point, somebody, whoever was in your life, never really tapped into. But you're very understanding and you're a very insightful woman. However, I hear, you know, I've, I've seen some of the things on your page and some of the comments. Um, people have said that you're compassionate, you're heartfelt, and a number of things. I agree with them, but you have a way of explaining relationships that's very, very helpful. It really is. Okay, enough of that because you're, I don't want your head to get so big now. Anymore. Okay, so. I mean, you know, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so in order for a man or a woman to feel safe in a relationship that they are a part of, what would you say they need to be looking for in order to be emotionally physically, mentally, that they feel connected and they feel emotionally safe, what are some of the things they need to be looking for beside a partner that will listen to them? What are some other things they need to keep in mind when a woman is thinking about, you know what, I just don't feel emotionally safe here. What are some things she needs to keep in mind so that she can be safe? Um, I mean, I think the listening to is a big part, but the listening to doesn't just come with the ears um oh, it exactly. comes with the actions that the person is hearing what is said and is providing whatever is needed at you know at the end of that and being consistent right consistency is probably also another really important thing and adaptability i think you know that wow. again the listening comes kind of with adaptability like Oh, you need me to do that for you? Okay, I don't have a problem to do that. And I will do that. And then I do do that. And then I do it consistently. And it doesn't stop after a week because I'm afraid that, you know, like you're going to leave or I just want to like show you that I can oh, do, do like it a, your way bar, or whatever. Barter system. It's kind of like a barter system. <laughs> it sounds like, okay, if you're going to leave, then I'll start doing that. <laughs> right, right, right. Which, you know, a lot of people get into an argument and then they're like, fine, fine, fine. And I'll change and I'll do. But then they're just doing it. They're doing it for external reasons they're not really doing it because it's really an internal understanding right there, there's so, no, so there's no, no heart devotion on his part or her part to actually do it they're doing it because they just want to stay out of trouble yeah, they're doing it because they want to stay out of trouble they're doing it because they mean well but when it comes down to it they, they don't have maybe the same belief that you do or again like that their subconscious like isn't their subconscious like isn't comfortable in that in doing that or their it hasn't grown to their conscious mind right because you're know, like conscious mind kind of gets and understands all these things but you your subconscious has to grow into your uh, uh into your conscious mind and so maybe it's just not there yet um and so you will never i don't think i think it would be really hard to feel safe with somebody who is inconsistent you know, who says, yes, 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 I'll do yeah, it. And true. then, you know, and then always fall, falters back into like old ways. That's a, that's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. That's like having a job and your boss is not consistent. You're not going to feel safe at your job. Right. You right. never know when you're going to get fired, laid off, pink slip. You don't know what's happening. Right. Because it's not right. consistent. Very good point. I really like that. I love talking to you. You're so smart. <laughs> okay. Somebody wrote uh, in... Uh, in a posting that you had there, they made a comment about your masterclass and about you. And they highlighted the fact that you had the ability to take over a room. Did you know you had that ability that people see you that way? That when you, when you come in, you know, everybody is, is kind of like the planet of the apes. You step up and everybody put bows down, <laughs> put their head down. Yeah. Always, every every time. I mean, you know, <laughs> me, J Lo, Taylor Swift, we're all we're all the same. <laughs> I like the way you you humbly took that straight up to J Lo and Taylor Swift, <laughs> Tay Tay and the whole thing. There was kind of all right. So, so no, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think of myself like that ever. And it's very kind. Uh, that was very kind. Um, uh, yes, it was a, yes, it was. Yes, it was a statement that was made yeah. about you. Speaking of statements, uh, before we have to go here, uh, I will not torture you and do two episodes <laughs> as we did, which is like two hours, uh, like I do on Instagram. But I gotta, I have to do these to you here. Um, I'm not gonna delve too much in attachment style because we would. I have so many questions that I would be asking you, it would be crazy. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, um, I will be able to have the privilege and honor 
to have you back again, uh, maybe okay. after the first of the year. Uh, technically, I'm supposed to be on vacation right now, but we started YouTube, <laughs> so I have to make shows. <laughs> but it, I'm glad that you uh, are indeed the second show for us, and uh, we start to uh, build an audience here. I have to ask you about this, though. Great posting that you have here. Detach to attach is the posting that you have on Instagram. Uh, many people watching this have no idea who I am and what I do, and uh, this is my daughters and myself. All three of us put on these shows. We find these uh, great people, low-budget show, high-caliber guests. Let me put my thumb in here. Uh, high-caliber <laughs> guests, low-budget show, uh, and now we're on YouTube. But detach to attach. Please explain that for the people uh, in the back row who don't understand what that means, <laughs> like me. Detach to attach in a relationship. What does that mean? I'm going to say that, but I want to say that your daughters are probably so well adjusted. <laughs> um, they are my executive producers. They actually keep me in line. <laughs> we just had a meeting last night. So it was funny. I mean, God, God I bless so. you. Yes, I, I hope so. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been uh, raising them. It's, uh, it's been a great joy of mine. So thank you for saying that. It made Absolutely. me smile. <laughs> now gonna, my face is gonna fall off. Uh, but uh, anyhow, you were gonna say detach to attach. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the funny thing, right? It's we want a, mo a lot of us, most of us want relationships so bad, and even uh, those of us that are, you know, kind of in like the spiritual, psychological mm -hmm. work and uh, which, whatever yeah. way, um, we, we find ways of bypassing that we really want relationship, but we're, and it's the most, on top of it, it is the most natural desire need yes. in the world, right? To Without, connect yeah. with others. Companionship, it, it, right. companionship yeah. it keeps us healthy. It's a safety thing. I mean, you know, there's multiple physiological reasons yeah. that we really need to attach. But it's only when we can let go of that, that need, that desperation, that desire, mm. um, or the fear of it, even, that it naturally comes into our lives. The fear, the fear of what? The fear that we won't attach? The, we have to let go of that. Some of us, yeah, become so afraid that we, so afraid of even trying to attach because we oh, don't okay. believe we're worthy um, of love, right? On the deeper yeah. inner side, most people won't say that out loud, right? Or yeah. don't see that about themselves, but right, right. deeply inside, they're constantly pushing people away. Well, they're really pushing people away because they're so afraid to be seen mm -hmm. um, that they're afraid that they will never uh, be loved anyway. So they just push people away rather than being open to it. Would it be safe to say, again, this is your profession. I am just the guy with the show or the face of a show, really my daughter. Uh, but um, I'm just curious. Is it possible that a lot of times people feel that way because they don't feel if they were to, as it were, let their hair down, mm -hmm. they won't be understood or listened to or appreciated? I mean, it's, it's all the things and it ranges for different people, right? But most people... Um, are, uh, a lot of us are really afraid to be seen and are afraid that if we are really seen and we, um, you know, with the, with all the, the masks off and all the, um, you know, we're completely stripped away of everything yeah. we do, mm -hmm. right? Like right, right. you lose your job, you lose your, your house, you lose, you know, all the things that we define ourselves who we, who by. We okay. Yeah. Um, and, and we're, you know, uh, who is that person underneath? Like, have you ever thought about who you are without all of those things, you know? And that's a scary, that's a scary place for most people. That's why we are, we're constantly trying to do stuff or get stuff or, or be or, this or, or that. Stuff. Yeah. Go here, yeah. Go there. yeah. 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 Or just, you know, even the being, even the, tra the traveling, you know, constantly mm -hmm. traveling somewhere. And, oh, I, I travel a lot. That's what I do. Or, oh, I rock climb, you know, I'm a rock climber, you know, we're always defining ourselves in some way because a lot of, and you know, this isn't to say that every rock climber is afraid to be seen, but you know, there's a healthy, I understand what you mean. Just, just for the audience that may not. <laughs> you know what? Hey, you know what? Listen, we just got it. We just getting started on YouTube. We already got a big audience already over at Instagram. If nobody rock climbers don't agree, then we'll go. You know, we got other people. Okay. Don't go rock climb. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm going tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Oh my God. So go ahead. You were saying. But yeah, saying. I mean, it's really you know, 
uh, a lot of us are afraid to be seen. And for whatever reason, we're afraid that, you know, uh, we're not worthy. We're afraid to be seen. And, um, and then we kind of push, push away relationship rather than um, are open to it. Because we're that, scared. That, that push it away relationship before mm-hmm. we have to end, we're going to end in a little bit here, another mm-hmm. five minutes or so. I want to touch on that before we go. And then we're going to circle back around. I just, I just want to always wanted to say that I, it's a new expression now I hear <laughs> I'm old. I don't know. So um, we're going to backpedal back to the master class in a moment, but I just made that one up. I might make a shirt for that. Okay. So when a person is having a hard time, just stripping it down and being themselves, there no makeup, no primping, no muscle package. It's just who you are. Mm-hmm. People have a hard time doing that. So that means if they're out there primping and priming and showing really not the stripped down version, they can start a relationship with someone and two people, if they're doing that, none of them really have let their hair down to show who they really are. That's kind of toxic, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I mean, it can be, you know, and it, it, and then there's a lot of kinds of defenses up, right? You're, right. you're walking into relationship with a lot of baggage, shall we say, and like loaded, a, already. loaded. Yeah. And a way, lot of defenses. Way down already, yeah. 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 Um, and you know, one of like some program I took that kind of had this, had, uh, the, somebody get up on stage and, um, then uh, how many relationships have you had? Like, person let's say had 10 relationships and they they gather 10 people right and put it behind this person and now you're meeting the 11th person across from you but you're really dating all of these 10 people you know and all of the problems and all of the issues because if you never deal with it if you never resolve it if you never um here it comes into the new one right yeah, you know, and that you're now you're in a relationship with somebody. I, I don't know, like, I, I think a lot of people have experienced that recently experienced this in a relationship where, you know, we were kind of having a disagreement or an argument. And the responses I were getting had nothing to do with what I was saying. And I was like, who are you talking to? Like, I didn't say that. Okay. You know, talking? like, that right. Sounds, it sounds like a number of people I've interviewed before, they have said that, talking about abusive or toxic uh-huh. relationships, they've said exactly what you said. And I'm talking to him, Paxton, in the show prep, they'll go like, and I'm talking to him. And he starts talking about that. And I'll go like, I wasn't even there. I never yeah. went with you there. Yeah. He's, like, yeah. he's in a time warp or she's in a time warp. Right, kind of right. Like that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, people get stuck in these kinds of, uh, in that head from that previous thing that happened or in that trauma, you know, and that's why that whole three-year-old thing happens too, where we are still stuck because we're not aware we haven't been able to unpack it. Nobody ever told us that, you know, the way that we're doing this is wrong and explained it to us. So we're stuck in that three-year-old self of ours. And especially and specifically when we're triggered, that's really when it all comes out, you know? And we may not know what that trigger or that spark may be, but someone else may be the recipient of what comes once we're sparked or triggered, right? Exactly, exactly. And they're trying to figure out, I have, I love you. I have no idea where this is coming from, but you know, tell me more, I guess, because if I did that, tell me, because how are we ever gonna know if we're talking to person, you know, that they dated number three or number four, we don't know which one is which, especially if they put on this, as it were, facade or this protection coping mechanism to look like they have everything okay the job the car Mm -hmm. the bank account whatever it may be the apartment and they look fine but in actuality we may be in a relationship with a trail of people uh of baggage that hasn't been unpacked yet that's crazy yeah yeah you just you just scared me never (laughs) never letting my daughters out of the house now (laughs) <laughs> I, I mean, they're, they must be so smart listening to all of these uh, no, listen, <laughs> different. My, my daughters, my daughters do this thing where they go like, dad, you, you need to talk to our friend or dad, you know, they, they have this thing where like, I'm going to be the dad to everybody. And I go like, no, just... <laughs> they're like, you're like, let them watch the YouTube. <laughs> actually, actually, hey, I got great guests. Tell them right. to follow that person. Don't listen to me. I'm your dad, though. I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> but um, when it comes to a relationship uh, and you find yourself confused, 
and you're watching this right now and you're wondering first of all how is it that this beautiful woman is on with this this host it's because i begged them to come on so i just <laughs> know um you you it's all the compliments try. really it's, it's, all, <laughs> hey, it's for real i'm just telling you this is what it is what, if you got it like that you got it like that so um what i was going to mention to you is the master class uh december 2nd 4 p.m 7 p.m eastern standard time would it be safe to say people should not be late to the class yes because this is the first <laughs> time i'm doing it thank you for saying that oddly this is the first time i'm doing it in one shot i usually do it over two days and i'm doing oh. it in one shot and there's like a lot of new information so yes please be on time because you don't want to miss anything and right. there's so, no going back over it and yeah okay so there is no <laughs> recording they're going to see later or anything like that uh, no. they need to be there and they need to be johnny on the spot jane on the spot whatever it may be and they need to be there five minutes ten minutes ahead of time make new friends talk to one another that kind oh, of thing yeah i mean i don't know if that's all going to be an option it's a, a zoom webinar but <laughs> okay, a zoom webinar. so whatever it yeah. is don't don't come late uh make try to catch everything at the beginning uh, either that or hopefully somebody in the class is selling a cheat sheet or maybe I'll just, you know, have, <laughs> um, you, you have, you have an amazing Instagram page. You have uh, a podcast too, if I'm not mistaken, right? Please tell it's, everybody er, all the different ways they can hear your voice and see you. Thank you. Um, yes. So I'm at, at redo.love on Instagram. Every time you uh, say that, you smile. Every time. <laughs> because I have to think about it every Don't time. Know. It's like I've had this page forever and every time I'm like, what is it? What is it? That's what, that's what makes me laugh. It's like it's the easiest name and you smile. And I try not to. I'm trying to look serious over here. The first few times when we did the show. But anyway, go ahead. I mean, I guess everybody knows at this point, you know, but I'm always like the at the re and I, there's a dot in the middle. I got to remember it all. But um, yeah. And then my my uh, website is the same one. It's uh, redo dot love. Love is the extension. So there's no dot com or anything. And then um, I do have a podcast. It's really a six series like thing about attachment style. Um and it's called Love Redo on uh, Apple and Spotify and awesome. a few awesome. other. Awesome. All right. Awesome. So I, I think I, I survived this moment in time. Uh, I wanted to talk about attachment uh, uh, styles and so forth a little bit and have some self-control. And I survived. We went 47 minutes and uh, I did not start dissecting everything <laughs> because uh, you explain it so well. I hear a lot of people explain it and I always, always think of you and, and go like, man, I just love the way you explain it. Um, I hope that we'll be able to get an opportunity to do that and dissect, uh, dissect them again, but now on YouTube, even though you are all over the place, I'm you know, just a, a small window of opportunity <laughs> in life. Uh, you have have a big picture opportunities in front of you. I appreciate you so much for being the second person on our, our YouTube live and uh, that you said, yes, I'm going to keep beating that and make people sick. They're going to like, man, cut this thing off. Um, do me a favor. Yes. Name three things real quick that people need to keep in mind so that they can have a healthy relationship as a reminder uh, on our way out. I right, three things. God, now I wish I was prepared. Um, I like when you're not prepared. Ah! <laughs> three things to have a healthy relationship. Uh, accountability, personal accountability. Uh, be accountable for yourself totally and completely within the relationship. Uh, take some communication classes oh, wow. <laughs> or courses. That's, that's good yeah, no, that's good. Because <laughs> even, you know, even when you are trying to be accountable, you know, the words can come out wrong and be really triggering for other people. And, uh, you know, really do the personal work. I cannot stress that enough. The relationship falls into place when you are, are happy inside yourself, when you feel worthy of it, when you know and understand what your needs are um, and your standards are and your boundaries are and all of that. I mean, I could have pointed to all that, but if you haven't done the inner work, then those will all just be kind of, those won't mean anything. Um, again, you stuck the landing, drop the mic time. We're out, everybody. <laughs> we love each and every one of you. Welcome to Narc Abuse TV, and now goodbye.
Thank you very much, my friend. We'll see Thank everybody you later. Thank you so much. No worries. Bye. <laughs>